Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Someone had asked me to do a follow-up podcast. I did a prediction for the 2022 season back in November 2021, and they wanted me to see how close I was, or to report, I guess, on how close I was at my predictions. Since we are now in the 2022 season, I'll go ahead and go over the predictions again and the outcomes and some surprises, I think, for all of us with the season and the way it's going so far. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. So at this time in 2021, most of the stores were out of 3-inch trichlor tablets and they were rationing them. If you go to your local Leslie's pool supply, you're going to see a pretty good supply of tablets. At least in my area, they have a good supply. And they're actually on sale, quote unquote. They're a little bit more affordable than I had predicted. So the prices have kind of stabilized. I mean, they're still at what I would consider a very high price point considering the previous seasons they were a lot less expensive but you can buy a 35 pound bucket for 199 dollars and the 50 pound buckets i'm not sure where they've gone to but a lot of the leslie's in my area just have the 30, 35 pound buckets i think there is a plastic shortage that I, is going around and so the 35 pounds seems to be also for the price point you know 35 pounds for 200 dollars is a lot more palatable than a 50 pound bucket for like 240 or 50. And I guess they're more affordable. They haven't gone to the extreme that I thought they would go, you know, plus 300, but they, they're they definitely double in price, easily doubled in price still. A 20 pound bucket's 120 and a seven pound bucket's $70. So what is that? So that's a $10 a pound right there roughly for the seven pound bucket. So it's pretty expensive, $7, I mean $10 a pound, and you figure that each tablet's about 8 ounces, so every two tablets is 5 bucks, is that correct? I think that's right. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty expensive when they were really inexpensive previously. So the price of tablets are kind of surprising that they haven't gone any higher than what they were at at the beginning of 2022. So if you stocked up, you really didn't save too much money. But at least you have the Triclor tablets, and they're, again, readily available. So it's not an emergency situation at this point, but it could change as the season goes on. I do think that all of those who thought the price of Triclor would come down this season were wrong with their prediction because it hasn't really come down dramatically. It's still way inflated from 2021 and 2022. So I think there was someone who predicted, I think it was Scott Roberts of National Pool Route Sales who said that he thinks the price is going to drop out and drop down, but it didn't happen, and I don't think it will happen because the demand is still pretty strong for the tablets, and that kind of coincides with the price point. And who knows when the Biolab factory is going to be back online producing the tablets. I think they're supposed to be back online after this season, but we'll see. If they are back online, then maybe in 2023, the price of the Triclor tablets will go down again a little bit more. But I don't think they're ever going to drop back down to, you know, $100 for a 50-pound bucket retail like they were uh, two and a half years ago. One thing that's surprising is how much Cal Hypo has taken off this season and is sold out at my local Leslie's. I was there the other day to get some Cal Hypo. All they had were an off-brand, which I'm not familiar with, and they had the boxes of the Shock 24 bags. So I think after my discount, I paid 140 bucks for 24 pounds of shock or individually one pound bags of the, uh, what is it, Power Powder Plus, what they sell there, 73% Cal Hypo. So they ran out of the buckets, which was surprising because usually they don't. And last season they didn't run out of the Cal Hypo. So I think Cal Hypo has caught on big this season. A lot of pool pros have gone to it, mainly because it's accessible 
and they like the effect of the cal hypo. I mean, it does add calcium to the water, and so in some cases you want to be cautious with the use of cal hypo. I really like the cal hypo tablets, and I really thought that this season you'd be able to find them in pretty wide distribution, the Pool Life and the CCH tablets that were made by Segura. Unfortunately, they sold to Solanus, which is a pretty big chemical company. They own Applied Biochemists, they own HTH, and I don't know if that kind of affected the rollout of the Cal Hypo tablets. I don't know if it was maybe production issues because, again, there may have been some problems with the buckets for the Cal Hypo tablets. You can't really put them in anything but a bucket. And I think I thought they would catch on a lot more than they caught on from last season. It's just that they're just not readily available anywhere for sale. So you can just go in there and pick up a bucket of Cal Hypo tablets. It's not that accessible. Even on the Leslie site, you type in Cal Hypo tablets, nothing comes up. You get like lawn furniture. That's all that comes up there. So it's one of those things where I thought the Cal Hypo tablets would really have a good chance to cut into the market. One reason is they don't have any cyanuric acid in them. So when you're using the Cal Hypo tablets, you're not adding any cyanuric acid to the water. And I thought the price point is fairly comparable to a 40 pound bucket of the trichlor. For instance, if you just look online for the Pool Life NST Prime tablets, their 44 pound bucket is 279 if you order online. And they mentioned earlier that a 35 pound bucket of trichlor was 199. And so that works out, and this is retail pricing, to about 636 a pound for the Cal Hypo and 571 a pound for the trichlor which is pretty close as far as the price point goes. So I really thought the Cal Hypo would have, the Cal Hypo tablets would have taken off this season, but I think they're just having a production problem. I know that Leslie's is slated to get the Cal Hypo tablets. When I talk to them, they're in their system and they have the CCH tablets already, but they just don't have the Pool Life tablets on the shelves for the customer. So maybe next season, but I, I know that they probably are coming to the big retail pool stores and it may just be the 2023 season when you see the Cal Hypo tablets more readily available. And I really think the Cal Hypo has taken off because liquid chlorine was in such short supply last season that a lot of pool professionals and homeowners that went to Cal Hypo, which was readily available in the pool stores. That's why this season I was in Leslie's again just this week and there was no Cal Hypo buckets, just some off brand that they had to bring in because they didn't have any of the other of their store brand Cal Hypo. They did have the boxes with the one pound bags, which are more expensive per pound than the buckets. But I think Cal Hypo definitely has become king this season as far as the chemical of choice for the Pool Pro and for the homeowner. It's really not a bad chemical. The byproduct is calcium and it could cloud the water if you put in large amounts without um, mixing it in a bucket or adding it to the skimmer. That's the way I introduced it to the pool. And I think Cal Hypo definitely has picked up traction. I haven't seen too much Dichlor. I mean, I don't think the stores carry too much of it because the cyanuric acid prices have just gone crazy. And that one of the ingredients of Dichlor, of course, is cyanuric acid along with the trichlor. But have you seen the price of the bucket of cyanuric acid? I'm sure you have if you're a pool pro and you went to go buy some recently. But just looking at the retail prices here online, eight pounds for $45, that's pretty ridiculous. And then you have a 50 pound bucket and it's the kind of bucket that the pool guys carry out there and it's 310 dollars online to get this and of course it's a large thing to ship but i think it's one of those things where i mean they have the clorox four pounds of cyanuric acid for 21 dollars at walmart and that's an outrageous price for cyanuric acid but of course it's in short supply also I'm not exactly sure why it's in short supply but it has been, and so cyanuric acid by itself is really expensive. So that's something I, I didn't realize would happen this season, is the price of cyanuric acid kind of skyrocketing. So if you didn't buy it, you know, buy one of those 100-pound drums last year, you're pretty much out of luck, you know, because now you're paying a premium for it. And you do need it for the saltwater pools and for the pools that are mainly on liquid chlorine. And the pools you're using Cal Hypo on, you would definitely need conditioner. The ironic thing is that the liquid pool conditioner, the instant pool conditioner, what they call it by natural chemistry. I call it liquid pool conditioner, but it's instant. It's a liquid form. That's a sodium-based product. I guess it has so cyanuric acid of some form in there. But if you look at the price for a gallon of this, just retails like $30, maybe a little bit less in some places. 
It's actually a better deal to buy the liquid cyanuric acid instant pool conditioner, the natural chemistry brand, than I think it is to buy a eight pound container or six pound container of it. You're almost better off with going with the instant pool conditioner for a 10,000 gallon pool to raise the cyanuric acid to 30 parts per million. So it's not really a bad product and it, it's really easy to introduce to the pool. You just pour it in there and then you don't have to worry about the cyanuric acid dissolving in the skimmer or the pump or the filter for 24 hours. So it's pretty easy. And the price of that is now becoming more comparable to the granular cyanuric acid. I mean, right now the retail price of four pounds is about $25. The liquid instant pool conditioner is $29. So it's a good trade off to get the liquid pool conditioner, which I think is highly effective. And it's also a product that was developed and, and created by the legend Bob Lowry. And I love the instant pool conditioner. It's uh, marketed and sold by Natural Chemistry now. So I think that's something that I didn't predict, the high cost of cyanuric acid in the industry, and that CalHypo would really take off. And you, you're, we're being sold out of CalHypo now at the beginning of June here. So CalHypo is the clear winner this season so far as the go-to chlorine type. I think one thing that I couldn't predict, and probably no one could predict, is the high cost of gasoline which will translate into higher costs for everything. Right now in California, the price of diesel is over $7 a gallon. And this is going to cause an increase of everything, not just pool related products, but everything else you buy out there. So the price of labor here has definitely gone up. Minimum wage in California, I think is like 15 something an hour and people are paying above that. And then you have gas at six, I think I got it yesterday for just about $6 at a cheap gas station, thrifty gas. And it's a lot higher in certain areas, higher than that in certain areas of California. And I filled up 17 gallons, cost me $102 here. And this is something that can't be predicted, wasn't predicted by anybody. And I don't think it's going to ease up, as far as I can tell, anytime soon or very rapidly. So the higher price of fuel is going to keep the chemical prices elevated. Whatever kind of dip we had in trichlor because of maybe an oversupply at this point is going to be erased by the high price of gas and the continued high price of labor. I mean, if you're paying your employee $15 an hour and gas costs $6, that's not really an equation that's going to work effectively. So you may have to raise your, your rates or your salary of your employees. This will cause you to raise the cost of your goods. And this will, of course, trickle down to the price of the chemicals, the price that you're paying for the chemicals out there. So what are some solutions to all this? The mess of the high price of gas, the high price of the chlorine? Well, if you're a pool service pro, raising your rates two times a year is pretty unheard of, but it's something that you may have to do. If you're not an all-inclusive service, you can actually do something right now to offset some of this, and that is changing your filter cleaning schedule from six months to every four months. That'll give you one extra filter cleaning. And let's say you charge $85 per filter cleaning. Now here on the West Coast, we have large filters, unlike parts of Florida, where you have these single bullet cartridges, but we have four cartridge filters and larger DE filters. And we charge anywhere from 70 to 95 to hundred dollars to clean the filters. But let's just say you had 70 pools, 70 filters to clean, and you charge $85 per filter by doing them three times a year versus two times a year, which by the way, probably translates into better water quality overall anyway, which means you're going to use less chemicals. But if you just added the filter cleanings every four months instead of every six months, that would generate at $85 a filter cleaning, $5,950 during that period. So you're adding $6,000 to your bottom line every year just by doing something as simple as going from every six months to every four months with the filter cleaning, which is something that wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, filter cleaning is a pain, but it's going to really bring in some money. You can also start charging the customers for an enhancer or a conditioner charge. The conditioner charge back in the old day used to be for cyanuric acid which we don't add a lot to the pools here in California, especially if they're on tablets, but you will have to add them to pools that are saltwater pools and pools that are using liquid chlorine. So you can add a surcharge at the beginning of the season for algaecite. That's already passed by the way, because we're in, in the season. So at this point, you can pass on some of the cost to products to customers that maybe you didn't 
maybe you didn't charge them for any algicides that you use. Well, now you're going to charge them for the algicides. You're basically going to charge for everything that you didn't charge for. If you weren't charging for salt cell cleaning, now you're going to charge $45 to clean the salt cell. Things of that nature you're going to charge for to make up the loss of income based on the higher cost you're paying for the chemicals. Now you can, of course, raise your rates again. But raising your rates more than twice a year, three times a year, it's kind of weird. I mean, it's, we're in a kind of a weird economy anyway. So it would be kind of odd to raise it that many times. Maybe at the beginning of the season, you should have raised it higher. But then you scare off your clients that you, know, you can't raise the rates by 30 or 40 percent in a lot of cases. And people aren't going to balk at it. And there may be a pool service company that's cheaper than you and hasn't raised their rates as aggressively and they may garner some more business that way. So there's a trade-off there by raising your rates too high and opening a door for your competition to come in that may charge less. But you can get creative and find out, find new ways to make more money at the accounts. And you're going to definitely raise your hourly rate and you're going to raise your install rate. So maybe if a pool motor, you would charge $250 to install back in the day, maybe just six months ago, now you're charging $350 to install that. That's not, you know, too bad. The customers, it's not something that is super drastic. If you were charging $400 for a filter install, now you're charging $550. Whatever you can do to add a little bit of money every month to offset the higher costs is what you're going to have to do to survive in this inflationary kind of era that we're in. You may also be able to save money or actually you're better off passing on certain jobs. So Someone calls you to install a check valve and it's a 30 minute drive. You're going to spend, uh, let's see, that's $12 on gas here to get there. And then you're charging, you get the part, you charge them whatever, $80 to put it in. It takes you an hour and then you have to drive back. You're not really making a lot of money at that point. So you want to maybe pass on those Nicky knack jobs and just pass them on to someone else or let someone else do them. You may have a limit of how much you can do or charge a minimum charge of a visit. A lot of plumbers do this now where, you know, they have the $80 drain cleaning, but if you call them to do something else, they have a minimum that they're going to charge you for whatever they're doing. So that way they're not losing money by spending an hour, hour and a half at your particular job where they can make more money doing something else. So you may have to have a minimum service charge that you're going to charge people even for the nicky knack little repair so that you're actually making money when you go out there. You certainly can sell your client's saltwater generators and that will definitely offset a lot of the chlorine costs that you would have to put into that pool. And I think saltwater generators are a good sell for a lot of customers and it's a good way to offset some of the costs that you would incur. Of course, you're going to be spending more money on muriatic acid at that point. But the saltwater generator is always a good alternative if the customer is already leaning towards it. Go ahead and push them into getting one at this time. And then, of course, I mentioned this in the other one, and I'll mention it here again. But if you're not using some kind of enhancer on your pool route, you're really going to be struggling with the chemical cost. And the cost of the enhancer is something that the customer will be paying for. So why not use it? So if you haven't used the Pool RX, I definitely would recommend using that on your account. You can also use a phosphate remover and enzyme. And what I do for my customers, I'll buy the product and they'll pay for the enzyme and phosphate remover and I'll leave it over by their equipment so they know they own that product. Then I'll add the phosphate remover and the enzyme every week while I'm there. And this is definitely a way to enhance the chlorine and allowing it to be more active and not be wasted, so to speak, on certain things that the phosphate and enzyme are going to remove. And then, of course, lastly, you can add boric acid powder and bring the borate levels to 50 parts per million, which will do a lot to extend the chemical usage or to curtail the chemical usage, I should say, because it's a natural algestat. So algae is not going to grow in there in most cases. So you're not going to need algicide. And the pH doesn't go up as rapidly because borate is a secondary buffer. And I get my boric acid powder from dudadiesel.com. You can order it and they'll deliver it FedEx in my area. That's what it comes as FedEx. And you can order buckets of it, bags of it, and it'll definitely offset the chemical usage on your pool route. And of course, the customer is going to pay for the boric acid powder. You can just sell it to them as a chlorine enhancer. 
You don't have to go into detail of exactly what it is. There may be some customers that want to know, but boric acid powder is a good way to add the borates to the pool and is highly effective in reducing the chemical usage and chemical costs. If you're a homeowner, you definitely want to add this to your pool so that you're not spending a lot of money on chlorine. And the chlorine will last a lot longer and stay in the pool a lot longer with one of these three enhancers that I mentioned here. And of course, Bob Lowry had a very simple answer to saving money on chemicals. And it sounds counterintuitive, but if you keep your free chlorine level higher in the pool, it'll prevent algae from growing, of course, and then it won't dip down as rapidly and you don't need to shock the pool. And since I mentioned Cal Hypo prices and all the other prices have gone up dramatically, keeping a higher free chlorine level makes some sense because then you don't have to worry about it zeroing out and adding a bunch of shock to bring it back up. So keep your free chlorine level at five or eight parts per million and you won't have to worry about adding shock to the pool because you're adding a maintenance dose of chlorine, keeping that level up there and it's not going to drop down to a level where you need to actually shock the pool and dump in, you know, three or four bags of Cal Hypo, which would be about $25 worth of chemicals. And if you just add a little bit every day with the Cal Hypo tablets or use trichlor or liquid chlorine, there's no need to really shock the pool and add a lot of chlorine at one time, which is pretty much throwing money away. So I think his solution has some real logic behind it. It's kind of like, my grandfather used to always fill his car up before it got below half empty. And psychologically, that makes a lot of sense now because then I would have spent $50 instead of $100 on gas. But that's really not the same concept. It's not like some psychological trick that you're adding more chlorine gradually to the pool and all at once. But by keeping the free chlorine level up, you're not going to have to add a big shock level to the pool and throw a bunch of money in there. So I think Bob Lowry definitely is a smart guy. And he's def his knowledge is definitely missed in the industry. He probably came up with some new clever ideas, um, but he's not with us anymore. But I think he's left a legacy of some pretty great points. I think the aspect of keeping a higher chlorine level makes a lot of sense to me. And I do that in my pool route in the summertime anyway. I keep all my pools at five parts per million or higher. That way I'm not worried about algae or shocking the pools. And of course I use an enhancer on all my pools. So I don't have to worry about adding a lot of chemicals or chlorine to the pool to begin with. But having that high free chlorine level is a hedge against, you know, algae growing or the pool zeroing out. So that's the predictions. Well, not the predictions, but the outcome of the predictions. I was a little off on the trichlor pricing. I think I said it was going to go even higher. And I was surprised that Cal Hypo has really been a big seller this year. And the gas prices are definitely surprising to everyone out there. If you're looking for other podcasts, you can go to my website, swimmingforlearning.com, and on the banner, click on the podcast icon. And also, if you want to enhance your business, check out my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.